The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to learn about integrated circuits, or ICs. So far in the series, I've focused on discrete components. Electronic devices constructed as a single unit, such as transistors, resistors, capacitors, and diodes. But I've wanted to make things a little more interesting, dive a little deeper. And to do that, we need to get into integrated circuits. While discrete components have a single, simple function, ICs take those components and integrate them into circuits on a single chip, hence integrated circuit. If you've ever opened up a piece of electronics and checked out the PCB, you've probably seen these little black squares or rectangles. Those are integrated circuits, ICs. Let's start with looking at one very common IC, a 741 op amp. Here's the schematic diagram found in the chip's data sheet. Hopefully by now you'll recognize all these symbols, being 22 transistors, 12 resistors, and one capacitor. Now, rather than the circuit being made of discrete components soldered onto a PCB, the entire circuit is printed onto a single piece of silicon. All those transistors, resistors, and capacitors are in there, made of tiny N-type and P-type structures, connected on the surface by aluminum plating. Now, ICs are already pretty small, but the actual functional part of the chip inside is even smaller. The silicon chips inside the casing are so small that they have tiny wires running through the casing that connect this tiny chip to the external pins and terminals. Let's take a look at what those external casings look like. Some simple ICs that don't require many pins make use of packages designed for discrete components, like those of transistors. Like these voltage regulators that utilize the same packaging as MOSFETs. Others, like these single inline packages, have more pins but along only one side. Through hole chips with contacts down two opposite sides are dual inline packages, or DIPs. Dips often use sockets so that they may easily be replaced if damaged. Small outline packages include varieties of surface mount chips such as SOICs, TSOPs, and SOJs. For more complex ICs that require more input-output or I.O., chip carriers have J-shaped pins or metal pads on all four sides of the package. And still, some integrated circuits require so many connections that they use grid arrays pins for through hole, and balls for surface mount. Now to figure out the pin numbering on all these chips, you can often find a notch or dot on one of the edges or corners. Pin one will be at or to the left of the dot or notch, and continuing down the left side around the chip in a counterclockwise fashion. The pinout on four-sided chips may be less straightforward. The dot on these can be in one of the corners or in the middle of one side, so that the one side is split having pins at both the beginning and end of the numbering scheme. Integrated circuits can be broken down into three basic categories, digital, analog, or a combination of the two. Analog, or linear ICs, respond to, produce, and or amplify signals of varying degrees of voltage. Two of the most common types of analog ICs are op amps and voltage regulators. Operational amplifiers, or op amps, offer a high gain over a wide range of frequencies. While the chips have eight pins, the schematic symbol only shows five leads. The remaining three pins that are not typically represented by the symbol are specialized and used for fine tuning. Keep an eye out for that symbol, as op amps are often incorporated into other ICs. Voltage regulators regulate voltage by automatically adjusting the amount of current flowing through a load in order to maintain a constant output voltage. They typically have an input voltage range and can have either a single fixed output voltage or an adjustable output voltage range. Analog circuits are quite useful, but if we want to be able to process or store data, we need digital electronics. Digital circuits operate using only two states, high and low, often represented by one and zero respectively. Digital ICs include logic gates, flip-flops, shift registers, counters, memories, and processors. 
Much of electronics revolves around logic. If this is happening, then this should happen. This is where logic gates come in. A logic gate uses the conditions of its input or inputs to determine the state of its output. They include NOT gates, also called inverters, AND, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, and XNOR. In the same category, there are also flip-flops and latches, with each logic gate only requiring a few pins. Rather than being packaged individually, they are often bundled together with multiple gates in a single chip. When looking at logic circuits, you'll likely come across a few abbreviations that would be helpful to know. TTL, transistor-transistor logic, ECL, emitter-coupled logic, CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductors using MOSFETs. While these can be made with discrete components, they can often be found as an IC. Next in digital ICs are memory chips, the two main types being random access memory, RAM, and read-only memory, ROM. RAM is the type of memory, like in your computer, that can be read and written over and over again. ROM cannot be written over and is typically programmed at the factory. Though you may hear of EEPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory that can be reprogrammed by an individual. These chips have a transparent window that allows for the UV light exposure required to be able to rewrite the chip. However, they have mostly been replaced by EEPROMs, which can be programmed and erased in circuit. Some integrated circuits are mixed signal, incorporating both analog and digital signals. Let's start by talking about converters. An analog to digital converter, or ADC, receives an analog input signal and outputs a 4-bit binary number that is proportional to the analog voltage it measured. A digital to analog converter, or DAC, takes a binary number and converts it to an analog voltage that is proportional to the binary number. But the most exciting mixed signal ICs are MCUs, not the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but microcontrollers. A microcontroller is essentially a computer on a chip. It has a simple microprocessor, flash memory for holding its single program, RAM for holding temporary data, and lots of general purpose input output known as GPIO. MCUs are considered mixed signal because many include an ADC or a DAC on chip. They are commonly found as the brains of larger boards, which are also confusingly referred to as microcontrollers, such as Arduinos or BeagleBones. The last IC I want to talk about is one that's incredibly useful. It's inexpensive and quite robust, but it falls in a bit of a fuzzy area when being defined as analog or digital, the 555 timer. This little 8-pin chip contains two comparators, a flip-flop, an inverter, two transistors, and a voltage divider. It can be used as an oscillator for use in LED flashers, logic clocks, tone generators, pulse generators, simple ADCs, and more. It can function as a one-shot pulse generator for use in timers, touch switches, capacitance measurement, and PWM. It can also function as what is called a Schmidt trigger, functioning as a flip-flop. 555s can also be found in pairs in the 14 pin 556 IC chips, or 4 to a chip in the 16 pin 558s. In future episodes, I'll be diving a little deeper into some of the ICs I mentioned today, including voltage regulators, op amps, and 555 timers. But what other ICs do you want to learn about? Or is there a project you've been dying to see that includes one of the ICs I mentioned today? Tell me about your ideas on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!